Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. I'm going to take a little different approach on this particular reaction video because I'm going to do my best not to get any type of copyright strike for using someone else's content. It's a very rare thing. As a matter of fact, the only individual out of the dozens of reaction videos I've done, the only individual that has ever tried to get me a copyright strike is Rachel Dara Prince, Russell J. Gould's, uh, I don't know, secretary, handler, I don't know, whatever she is. She's the only individual out of all the dozens of videos that I've done that has tried to do a copyright strike on me through YouTube and failed miserably, by the way. But just to be cautious, just to be sure, I'm going to use the mini player function and I'm going to play the video down in the lower starboard side corner where you can, you can see it down there. You can see the individual who's talking. Now this individual, I have not really ever seen their channel before. This is the first video I've ever seen on them. What I did was I put uh, a search for quantum grammar to see if there were any new videos in the last month or so. And this is one of the ones that popped up. And what it is is actually a reaction, her reacting to the Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller seminar that I actually reacted to not too long ago. Now, looking at what I did look at from her material, she seems to be a very um, sarcastic type of individual. She likes to make fun of the sovereign citizen people and the, you know, people who are political extremists. She, that's, that's what she does. She makes fun of them, basically. And so that's, I expect no less of her here. Well, let's see what kind of fun she makes of David Windmiller. And then, and then in turn, I'm going to have a little fun also. So let's check it out. So if you recognize it, don't worry. We're going to watch more than we watched before, probably. This is a gentleman by the name of David Wynn, or as he likes to be called, David... <laughs> Wait, sorry. His official name as he goes by, went by, he's, he's dead now. He went by colon David slash Wynn colon Miller comma. <laughs> the woman can't even get the guy's name right she can't even get his name correct it's colon david hyphen win colon space miller in other words it's a colon david hyphen the symbol hyphen win and then a colon and then a space and then miller period and actually the d would be capitalized and then lowercase a v i d hyphen Win the W in Win would be capitalized, and the rest of the letters lowercase. And then Miller, the M in Miller would be capitalized. And also there would be a degree symbol in between the N and Win and the full colon. So she's basically betraying her ignorance of the subject matter here, right at the beginning of the video. So my expectations, although they were not high to begin with, have drastically dropped. 
And if this is the level of, I guess, critique that this woman offers and her viewership falls under that, wow, this is a this is an awesome representation of the extreme lack of research and critical thinking in the general population. Well, at least a segment of the general population, the segment that feeds into and likes the stuff that someone like this, the content someone like this produces. That's where their level of critical thinking is and their knowledge level. There's no way to sugarcoat it. All right. To me, it seems like the lowest common denominator, and then you, you find that, and then you go way down in the hole, and then this is where you find this individual and her critique. <laughs> anyway, um, what do you need to know about David? David is an interesting fella with some interesting thoughts on how the world works. I just want you to know, basically everything he's going to say, in my opinion, appears to be a bold-faced lie. <laughs> I, I did look, I looked up his background. I looked up his background to find out the fact from fiction here. And in terms of things I could actually verify, I couldn't verify any of his claims, basically. <laughs> so just be aware. And in fact, the only things I did find were debunking his claims directly. Okay. So we'll try and point out things, but you can just probably assume the things he says are bullshit because he just makes stuff up. So let's go. Just to comment on what she said there. First of all, she couldn't even get his name correct. So the starting point, the foundation of what she's about to present is rotten. Her foundation is actually BS, to use her words. As far as the claims that he makes... I do agree that a lot of what he says in his videos, it's very hard to, to certify those claims as far as personal stories about UFOs or things that um, he did maybe at the Vatican or the UN or the Hague or the UPU or the Benjamin Franklin Post Office in Philadelphia. Those things are very hard to certify. But what can be certified is the fact that he spent a lot of time in those foreign vessels in dry dock around the years 2010, 11, and 12, maybe 13. Those records are publicly available on the internet. As far as I know on Google, they are still available. He was in literally dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of court cases in and out of different courts in multiple states. In North America that can be certified now if the fiction is net the fiction system what we call the fiction system the adverb verb adjective pronoun fiction legal system is never going to certify that someone beat them it's just not going to happen anyone who's ever used correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar successfully knows that it is a very rare thing that they will get closure on ooh we beat the fiction system it never happens what happens is the fiction system just goes away it doesn't bother you anymore that's that's a win but they're never going to admit that what they will do however is what this woman is doing exactly what she's doing which is the way the fiction system navigates condescension making fun uh, trying to belittle, denigrate, basically criticizing something they know nothing about. And by the way she mentioned David's name at the beginning, the punctuation and stuff, tells me right away she doesn't know anything about correct sentence structure at all. And I have a feeling that she's going to certify that the more I listen to it, she's going to certify that her correct sentence structure knowledge level and knowledge of grammar in general is probably less than zero. This is a nine-hour video, by the way. He also has this six-hour one. Well, I uh, 
as you know, my, my name is David Wynn Miller, but I punctuate my name. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Benjamin Franklin, all punctuated the name same as I did. They were Do you mean hyphenated? For all 34 degree master masons. Uh, hyphenated is hyphen punctuation. Yes, it is punctuation. Yes. Hyphens are punctuation, just like forward slashes, semicolons, colons, periods, so on and so forth, dashes. Those are punctuation. Yes. Now, I don't know if there's any Masons in the crowd, but I am a 92nd degree Mason. If you watch Tinfoil Tuesday, you should be familiar that the highest actual degree... The highest Freemason rank is 33, but don't worry, he explains this. Uh. Unless this woman is a Mason, which she's not, she can only be an Eastern Star. If she's an Eastern Star, which Colin David Ivoin Colin Miller's father was a Mason and his mother was an Eastern Star, according to him. Unless she is that, if she's part of that brotherhood or sisterhood, if she's part of the craft, if she's not a part of it, then how would she know how high the degrees go? She couldn't possibly know because it is a secret society, sworn to secrecy. The first degree doesn't know what the second degree is doing. The second degree doesn't know what the third degree is doing. The third degree doesn't know what the fourth degree is doing. So on down the line, it's very compartmentalized. That's pretty obvious public knowledge. So for her to act like she's an authority on that, that she knows for sure that there isn't a 92nd degree Mason, that's assumption presumption, folks. I've actually been on live streams with Masons on TikTok, and I've mentioned that Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller is a 92nd degree Mason. And they, these Freemasons, and one of them's name was Bl Brother Fluff, F-L-U-F-F, -F -F, if you look him up on TikTok. He's on there. He does live streams all the time. Nice guy. He never says that there's no such thing. He's never, like, shot me down and said, there's no such thing as a 92nd degree Mason. He might make a joke about it, but he doesn't say no. So that tells me. I mean, David Wimmiller made the claim that he's a 92nd degree Mason. Who am I to doubt that? I have no way of certifying it. And I don't really care one way or the other. But I do know that he puts that degree symbol in his name. And no one, not one Mason, has ever come forth in the public or anywhere saying that Colin David Ivan Colin Miller was lying and that he's not a 92nd degree Mason. No brother of the craft has ever come forward and publicly said that you just get people like this who i'm mean, again again i don't know if she's an eastern star or not how would she know that but if she was an eastern star she would credential herself as such if she stands behind her words to be able to certify what she's saying but as it stands now as she said about david Wood miller at the beginning what she's saying is bs uh, i know you've been taught that masonry goes to 33 and 34 degrees for grand masters the reason I'm a 92nd degree Mason is because in 1988 I broke the math interface in all 5,000 languages, proving that language is a linear equation in algebra. Oh, okay then. Um, okay, so no, that's not true. Um, Freemasons only go to 33. There isn't an ultra secret, like, 60 more levels. That's not how this works. And this is where we're getting to the heart of what his primary... How does she know that, folks? Where's the proof that she knows how many degrees are in masonry unless, A, she is a mason or an eastern star, or B, she has some other kind of proof. She has a book that says this or something that comes from Freemasonry. You can't make this stuff up. Well... <clears throat> Stop and correct. Yes, you can, because she's making it up as she goes here, obviously. The claim here is, this is what people are paying, or at least showing up to this seminar for. 
okay? By the way, this is from 2012, so a little over a decade ago. That hurts to say. Um, <laughs> he does a lot of speaking events. This is what he did. He, like, went around the country and, and did this as a job, I think. <laughs> David made no secret that he was a day trader. Okay, that's what he did for money to put food on the table. I feel like the... Uh, the fees that he charged for the seminars were basically to pay for his food, his lodging, and things like that. It was never outrageous fees or anything like that. Um, but he was a day trader to put food on the table. He made no secret of that. And no one, no one twisted anyone's arm to come to his seminars. No one. She makes it sound like he's ripping people off. By the way, she said that. She's implying that. That's not true at all. Contract is by consent. If you decide to pay a fee to go watch David Wynn Miller speak, that's on you, bro. That's up to you. Your choice. You're a big boy or a big girl. You can make your own decision. If you think he's a ripoff, then don't go. Don't pay your fee. Right? It's simple. Actually. <sighs> this hasn't been done in 8,500 years of written language. When I did so, I was able to unlock the two-thirds of all the words missing from all languages in the world, and I can write any sentence in any language, frontwards and backwards, with the same meaning. Okay, so there's no such thing as hidden words. Words are made up. Words are just sounds we make with our mouths, or if it's a nonverbal language, like any of the... He didn't say that. He said missing words. He didn't say hidden words. He said missing. Again, she's jumping into assumption presumption. He said missing words. And anybody out there, any of my viewers that know this, uh, have a rudimentary closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, that have studied the almost 900 videos at this point in time on this YouTube channel, you will know that when David says he unlocked two-thirds of the missing words, He's talking about the positionals and the lodials, the for, of, with, and bys, the thus, for, those, of, those, with, those, by, those. That's what he's talking about. So if you're articulating one fact, say the Jason, for, the, Jason, period, there's two words in front of it, for, the, and then the fact, Jason. There's three words, for, the, Jason. For is one word, does a second word, Jason is the third word. Two-thirds of those words are for the. So instead of just writing Jason, you put for the Jason. You have positioned the fact with a prepositional phrase, which you would call that in the fiction, for all you fiction aficionados out there like her, just to explain it on basic layman's terms, that's what it is. The positional is represented by the number five, the lodial six, and the fact is seven. There's no modification. So that's what he means by two-thirds of the missing words. He's talking about the positionals and the lodials. <laughs> Various sign languages. It's things that you communicate with your hands. It's a social construct? There's no objective, like, English language out in the, in, the, in the universe. Like, you couldn't, like, take the universe and grind it down and, like, separate out language from it. There's no physical thing that is language. It's an idea. It's a collective thing we all agree on. There aren't hidden words. We he didn't say hidden. Missing. Missing. We make new words often be to describe new things. Actions, events, inventions, like, 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 understandings of things. But they're not hidden. It's not like they're elements. She keeps saying that. He didn't say hidden. He said missing. She may have a hearing problem. I'm not sure. I'm just taking a guess. All right, I'm being a little cheeky here. I'm kind of running into the territory that it, that the energy she's producing is, is, um, uh, sort of informing the energy that I'm using right now, and I'm recognizing it, I'm cognizing it right now, and I'm going to try and put a stop to it, folks. Because uh, I don't want to get into the same thing she's sort, the same sort of demeanor that she's 
exuding right now. The thing is this. We, as humans, will listen to things and we will not really listen closely to what the individual is saying, the precise words that they're saying. We will hear what we think they're saying and it will start a narrative in our brain and sometimes we will do this where we hear David Wood Miller say, I unlocked two-thirds of the hidden words. You think he said that, but he didn't say that. He said, I unlocked two-thirds of the missing words. But they're assuming it's hidden. And then they go on a whole, you know, however long monologue about that one assumption, presumption that David never said. They're putting words in David's mouth. Once this was discovered, it completely... Uh, 48 hours after I published on the internet, I had two Secret Service agents from Washington at my front door going, do you realize what you've done? You've just... David Wynn um, is actually in an episode of Warehouse 13 and he doesn't know it. <laughs> qualified every treaty, trust, and contract in 8,500 years on planet Earth. I says, well, uh, he says, who did you tell? I says, everyone. I put it on the internet. I says, I sent out 100 videos, 20 hours long, including a 100-page report. Uh, 100 videos, 20 hours long. In totality, they're 20 hours long, or each video is, is, or each video is 20 hours long? I feel like if it's enough information, even collectively, that it's 20 hours, which is more than double the length of this ridiculously long YouTube video... Can you summarize that in that paper? You said it's just like, oh, and I summarized it in this, like, paper. All of it? Ugh. On the entire studies to all nations of the United Nations and over... I sent it to the United Nations, all the nations. I have Germany's email address. 100 Oops, sorry. TV and news agencies around the United States. By doing that, I protected myself because when you have a secret that is so profound that it would disqualify planet earth it would cause you to get shot <laughs> disqualify planet earth and at every seminar at by the end of the seminar there's always a dozen people that walk up to you and say why are you still walking around well as pandora uh, uh destroyer of worlds now you might think that that's a bad thing the word destroyer, D-E means no, and stroy is contract. Of is an adverb which connects to a pronoun in front of it. P-R-O means no, N-O means no, and U-N means no. So the word destroyer is a no, no, no word. I need you to understand that basically this man invented a con lang and is acting like it's mathematically objective. He invented a really shitty con lang that doesn't make any sense. Now, she's entitled to her opinion. But as she showed at the beginning of the video, she has no knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. She has no idea what she's talking about right now. She's sharing an opinion on something she knows nothing about, which, I mean, welcome to the club. 99% of the internet is sharing opinions about stuff they know nothing about. That's just how it goes. And she's no different. But she gets views. And people follow her. And they obviously, I don't know, subscribe to her. They like the way she presents her opinions and things like that. That's cool. I mean, there's room for everybody out here. And he's going around or went around telling people this was the secret language of the universe, basically. I've never heard him say that quantum grammar was the secret language of the universe. Have you? Have you ever heard him say that? Or is she just putting words in his mouth again? And that it will get you out of any court issue because this is a sovereign citizen thing. No, it is not. And I'm just going to stop it right here because this is, this is making me a headache. It is not a sovereign citizen thing. Sovereign citizen is an oxy oxymoron. There's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. You can be a sovereign, which I don't know anybody who's a sovereign. And you can be a citizen. I know lots of citizens, but you cannot be a sovereign and a citizen. That makes no sense. Because if you're a sovereign, you're your own authority. You are not a citizen of anything. If you're a citizen, then you're part of something else and you're under someone else's authority. So, I mean, 
there you go. That's my gift to you, uh, lady, for free. Just explained to you that, gave you a little closure on that. Um, but David was not a part of that at all. He interacted with people who claimed to be a part of that movement to perhaps try and help them, but none of them ever really learned the grammar. And very few people will learn the grammar. And she's definitely not someone that would be probably open to learning this because she's already made her mind up about it, even though she knows nothing about it. And this is the common fiction system knee-jerk reaction to this stuff. Like if I would sit down with this woman, if she wanted to contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of the screen, and she wanted to go into a 10 to 15 minute video consult with me, I, if she had even just a little bit of an open mind, just a tiny bit of an open mind to this stuff, I could probably bust that door open for her and make her curious, cause curiosity, not make her, but cause her curiosity about this. Because I could explain it to her face to face. She wouldn't be able to sit there and she wouldn't be doing this. She wouldn't be making fun of me or anything like that because we'd be talking human to human. And I'll bet dollars to donuts that she would start thinking about her position very seriously and critically after what I would say to her. But that's never going to happen, folks. It just doesn't happen with people like this. I put them in as, um, I hate to use this uh, overly used term, but they're just, to me, they're just agents and trolls. Working with the fiction system, whether they know it or they don't know it, uh, to steer people away from anything that can help them become autonomous, and extricate them from the BS that is the fiction system and what she promulgates on her channel. Because if you notice on her channel, just when I look through the videos at, at a cursory glance, she makes fun of everything that is different or outside the norm. It would not surprise me. I don't know this for if it's true or not, but it would not surprise me if she's, you know, pro medical mandates. She's definitely pro-authoritarian follower system, all that stuff. Um, it's just par for the course. Contract is by consent. No one is twisting anyone's arm to watch her channel. No one twisted her arm to watch the David Wynn Miller video. No one's twisting your arm to be here watching this video. So as you can see, I just provided a continuance of the evidence that contract is by consent. All right. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.